Today, we're going to talk about cryptocurrencies. So first, I'm going to talk about what cryptocurrencies are, and then we'll talk about um, blockchain technology and a few of the individual different kinds of cryptocurrencies. And then I'm going to go over how you can purchase cryptocurrency. First of all, I went online and I looked up the definition of currency. And most of the definitions I came across were archaic. They all described currency as money that was tied to a specific country. And uh, in this day and age, we need a little bit of a more modernized definition, I think. So how about, let's see, currency is monetary units in general use as a form of exchange for goods and services. How's that? It doesn't have to be tied to a specific country. Um, that's one of the beauties of cryptocurrencies. Then I looked up the definition of encryption, which is where the crypto part of it comes from. And I found a real good definition, which I'm going to read to you here. Encryption, the process of converting information or data into a code, especially to prevent unauthorized access. So that's cryptocurrency. Now let's talk a little bit about blockchain. People get confused because blockchain and cryptocurrencies are so often in the same conversation. Um, they are two different things. Cryptocurrencies are the uh, monetary units and blockchain is a technology that allows for the exchange of the cryptocurrencies. So with blockchain technology, transactions are recorded in a block, it's like a block of data, and then the blocks are added to the chain. So it's a recording which is public and unalterable, a chain of transactions. And because it is public and unalterable, and it's also decentralized so that it's not controlled by any specific person, country, government, or organized body. That makes it more secure. Nobody can mess with it. And that's one of the things that's so great about cryptocurrencies. There's a few other things as well. Also the ease of exchange especially for people that do work internationally, you can make that exchange from party to party without a go-between in a matter of minutes. Now, most of the talk about blockchain technology surrounds just cryptocurrencies, but there's so many more uses for blockchain, and I think that it's something that we should get to understand because I think it's going to become um, more and more a part of everyday life because it could be ultimately so useful. Um, it can be used in keeping records, transactions. So like your emails and your text messages can be hashtagged and gathered into a blockchain where it can't be changed and it's public and people can check it and we can see what was actually said and we don't have one person's word against another's and nobody can go and change the information. It's recorded. So it makes for solid contracts. So you may have noticed that the value of different cryptocurrencies varies wildly from day to day. It's quite volatile. So it's a little bit risky, I think, to put a lot of money in it. But then, of course, there's a lot of people that are willing to take those risks. It's, um, I think if you stick with the more commonly known, more established cryptocurrencies, it's safer. It may look to you like buying crypto is similar to buying foreign currencies, 
where you um, you exchange American dollars for another country's uh, money and hope that the value of that money goes up in a way that's favorable to your exchange. Difference is that when you're dealing with money from other countries, the value of the money is dependent on that country's economy and how well it's doing. Whereas cryptocurrencies, the value is um, affected more by supply and demand. To me, cryptocurrency is more like the stock market, which is also based on supply and demand. So when I purchase stocks, I purchase the stocks online through an exchange, through a brokerage, and I never take physical possession of the stocks. And the values go up and down from day to day, depending on supply and demand. The same thing when I'm buying cryptocurrencies. I go online, I use an exchange, and I purchase my cryptocurrencies. I keep them online, and I keep them in the same platform where I bought them. Um, for me, it's Coinbase. I don't take physical possession. There is nothing to take physical possession of. And the value goes up and down. It's volatile based on supply and demand. I think that in the future, as it becomes more common in everyday use, the um, for one thing, I think the value will go up. And then when we get to a point where it's more commonly in use, I think that the, um, the values will stabilize. Now that's just me thinking what makes sense. I am not predicting the future and I'm not an economist. Um, so don't go buying cryptocurrencies based on what I just said.